Hey folks, it's Brian. This is a session review for the Elderath campaign that I play in using the RuneQuest 3 engine, the Avalon, Avalon Hill version of RuneQuest. One thing that our, our GM has done uh, to get more of a high fantasy feel is change the magic system. And I probably mentioned this in the previous video um, where we use... Um, Spell law, uh, spell lists for the uh, various magic systems. Um, my character Wes um, knows some essence lists, so I know how that system works. It's percentile based by list kind of thing, and he's got different um, mechanics on how. Uh, how many spell levels you can cast with one magic point is essentially five levels for every magic point that you can cast. And then your percentage goes down by 1% for every level. And if you boost it, it goes down and that kind of thing. <clears throat> and so my character will be casting some spells that you know are not RQ spells. Um, but you'll, uh, I'll, I'll mention that as that happens. Um... And there's some interesting effects from regular RuneQuest mechanics, getting specials, impale slashes, that kind of thing. Uh, so, without further ado, last time we stopped just as we heard hissing from the ceiling. So, this session started with the spider dropping down. It bit Alexander and started to attach a web to him. And then it looked like it was going to start to jump back up to its hole and like drag him up or something. But I cast my sleep spell, and over the past couple of weeks, the GM and I have been discussing some of the conversion issues we had during the first session, um, which I think we've pretty much nailed down now, where we're both comfortable with it. Um, but anyway, so I cast sleep on it. It does, in fact, fall asleep. So I tell everybody, hey, we got half a minute to put it out. And... Um, that first round, Toth, the uh, martial artist monk kind of person, moved in, hit it a couple times, crushed its skull, so it was down. Um, Toth then climbs up into the spider hole, you know, check out what's up there. He got stuck a couple times, was able to get himself back out. He did find up there another body, the desiccated one. Um, it did have a fine dagger on it, uh, and the armor was similar to the two human bodies, down on this level where we are. Who comes down and tells us what he found? I compared the dagger to mine, which is steel. And in this world, iron is the base metal. And steel acts like iron and RuneQuest Chlorantha compared to bronze. So the armor points for iron weapons and armor is half again as many as the normal iron point. Armor points. Four items. Plus, he goes ahead and, and treats them, doesn't read them with magical, but he gives them a bonuses to hit and damage as well, just plus one. At least that we've come across so far. Um, <clears throat> also on this dagger is a pommel with uh, a bow and oak leaves. None of us knew what that meant, but we put it in our notes. Uh, Raymond does first aid on Alexander and gives him two of the healing potions that he picked up from the church. And then uh, we go down to the bottom level of the tower, barricade the door, and, and camp out, rest for the rest of the day and the next night because Raymond is out of magic points. Um, we do build a small fire to help keep ourselves warm and to dry all my crap out because I fell in the moat earlier, so it stinks and is all wet. So I'm going to get a chance to dry that out. Uh, toward evening, I hear what sounds like a cart on the road. Uh, it's getting louder like it's coming closer. And so Toth goes up to the second uh, second level and looks out when the uh, arrow slits. And you can see a two-wheeled cart being drawn by an individual um, moving from the west to the east, which is the way that we had come through the swamp area. Uh, there is a lantern hanging on the cart, and the guy pulling the cart stops at the T intersection in front of the moat house. And he takes his lantern and he's looking for something on the ground or out in the swamp to the south. And he comes around his, his cart and is 
is looking on the ground behind and then up towards the moat house he's looking as well. But when he stops, he tells us to, you know, to bank the fire. So I try to do what I can to help block the light and stuff. Um, then he goes back around the front, hooks the lamp, turn back up, grabs the car and continues on. He goes to the next corner of the moat house and does the same thing. Only there, he as he's looking out to the swamp, he puts the lamp down, goes to the cart, pulls out a shovel, digs something up, and throws it in the cart. And um, Toth also noticed that there were bodies or something in the cart itself. Um, they're not moving, so they're obviously dead. In fact, there's like a skeletal like foot hanging out the back kind of deal. But then, then he continues on. Uh, the next morning, uh, we uh, check out the rubble to the north as the uh, western wall that's been broken down in the moat house here. <clears throat> Raymond tries to climb up over the rubble to see if he can't see over the top into the swamp itself. And Alexander uh, shimmies up the rubble um, towards the moat house proper to see if there's, you know, some back way into the building itself. Uh, Raymond can't seem to get up over the top at all. Um, while this is going on, I'm, I'm watching around, you know, checking the doors and the arrow slits across the way and just, you know, keep an eye about, about everything. Um, as Alexander goes up, the rubble is loose and it's not, it's not very stable. Uh, so he, Alexander ends up scrambling just to keep his feet. So we tell him to come on down. And he's having problems. So Raymond grabs uh, Toth's staff and reaches up with it to help Alexander get down. And while that's happening, I look and I see what looks like a, a giant lizard tail um, sticking out of the, the hole would have been where the rubble comes down and the, the top of the building stops. So let everybody know about that. So we, you know, pull out our, our weapons and we head towards the door at this point. This is a great hall of some kind. It was once well appointed, uh, but it's now in shambles. There's been some recent activity of things moving around, like somebody's been going through piles of stuff, that kind of thing. Uh, there are two hallways, one to the south and, and one to the west. We go down to the west hallway to investigate where you know this tail thing may have been. Toth is listening to all the doors, and I keep an eye to our rear, make sure they're sneaking up behind us. Uh, Toth does hear some movement behind the west doors and behind the one door to the north. There are two doors to the south. <clears throat> the door north, um, he hears like a skittering kind of thing, like maybe a spider or a giant insect kind of thing. Uh, Alexander checks the west door for traps and stuff, and we decide let's go through that one. Open it up. It is a wrecked room. Um, the roof looks like it's possibly unstable. There are carts and stuff in cots and stuff in here like it was a guard room of some kind. There's an alcove to the southwest where I see some movement. So hey, I see something in the alcove there. Um, uh, Alexander pulls his bow. Raymond slowly says in common, we see you, come out. He thinks there may be, it may have been a lizard man because of how big this tail was. <laughs> We hear a hiss, and I can actually see a forked tongue come out and touch the floor in front of the area, in front of the alcove. So I fire a shock bolt at it. Actually got special success, um, which counts as an impale. So it did max damage plus roll damage. They do a d4 plus one. Um, so I end up rolling a max of four. So I did 10 points to this thing. End up hitting the tail. No, it's not the tail. The left hind leg is rolling for locations. And as I do that, it then rears up so Alexander can see it. He does a bow shot at it. He also got a special success. Um, at that, the beast kind of flops to the ground and is kind of trying to drag itself forward. Um, and Alexander shoots it again and puts it out. As you search the room, an alcove is a chest. It's been rusted shut. Toth tries to pry it open with a spike. Inside is an old rumbling, like a crumbling cloth uh, that's covering a scale shirt. Just covers the, the chest, the thorax area. Um, that we think may be steel because it's not all rusty and, you know, compared to my dagger, it looks like it's probably steel. There's a crossbow in there. The spring needs to be replaced. There's a crossbow, a case of crossbow bolts, some of which are in need of repair. You know, the 
fletchings coming off, that kind of thing. And a small leather bag with some copper coins. I kind of figure this is probably a foot foot locker for one of the, the soldiers, but a steel scale shirt. I really debated putting that thing on. It would have um, knocked my magic down significantly because the whole you know iron steel messing with magic kind of thing. Um, at first, I thought it was like actual hopper, you know, chest and abdomen. But then I, I re, uh, was clarified, no, it's just the shirt, just the chest piece, which doesn't really do a whole lot, but it would certainly help my chest. But we decided, okay, no, we're just going to take this because it's obviously very valuable, but we're not going to be using it. Uh, we check out the southwest door bedroom rummaged. Uh, the south southwest door. And then we do the southeast door, uh, storage for the Great Hall, stuffed heads, antlers, that kind of thing, tapestry kind of stuff. Uh, it does look like there's been some recent activity in here, stuff being moved around, that kind of deal. And then we go to the north door. Uh, oh, before we do that, there's an opening in the Great Hall um, on the west wall to the north end, just stairs going down. And then we go back to that north door where we heard the noises, the scritching before. Um, the kitchen, there's moldy smell in here. There's supplies, a fireplace, containers. Um, Toth and I start searching around. He's using his his staff. I'm using you know my rapier, you know pushing stuff around. While we're doing that, a giant tick jumps out of the um, the chimney and attaches to Toth's leg. I slash it. I got a special. I didn't do a thrust because I was worried about you know his leg being there. Uh, so I did some significant damage to it. Uh, Alexander hits it. Toth also hits it, which ended up killing it. Uh, Raymond did just first aid on Toth, his leg. But it wasn't, I think he failed his first aid roll. So he ended up using actual magic to heal him. While that's going on, I use a torch to search out, sweep out the chimney, make sure there's nothing else up there. There wasn't. We then um, head over to the uh, south hallway, which has uh, a, like three, three more doorways on either side there, but then opens into uh, an area. It's a, a bearish kind of room again. The southeast corner of this room is all crumbled down and opens out into the swamp. Um, and there's an opening back there, and we can see some movement. Raymond finds some what looks like drag marks on the ground near the entry. Um, Toth checks that out. Yeah, it was like drag marks to me. So Raymond, um, I and uh, Alexander, or Wes and Alexander, are, are watching um, these openings to the south. Um, so Raymond comes to tap out Alexander. Hey, you go check it out, see what you think. While they're, he's doing that, this giant snake rears up behind Alexander. Um, Alexander gets enough notice from Raymond to do a dodge, which he does. He made a special success on that, so the snake still tries to attack, but was not successful. We all move to engage and attack it. Raymond hits it, uh, so the snake then turns its attack onto him. A couple of us hit it. Um, don't kill it, but it, it, it's hurt pretty bad, so it slithered away. I'm going to start checking out doors. The west door to the south is a bed chamber. You know, once was nice, now it's trashed. Uh, the west side north one has a, a table in the center of it, and on the east wall was a hanging of some kind of been torn down and damaged. Might be a map. Raymond likes that, so he rolls it up carefully and lays it on the table. A couple of rats scurry about, not the arrow's foot, that kind of thing. We head across the way to the east door, and the northeast or corner of this room is all broken in. It was once again recently furnished, but it's been destroyed. Uh, while searching around, we disturb some bats. They swirl around the flat opening. <clears throat> um, back into the Great Hall on the south wall is another entrance like the one on the west wall. When I step stairs going down, these are stairs going up, up to a ruined platform and more ruins looking up there. <clears throat> In the Great Hall, on the north side, all the way to the east, is... A door. We go and we check it out. We try to get Alexander to do his thing, um, but it's locked. It appears to be barred on the inside. So 
Toth attempts a shattering blow uh, to kick, kick the door in. It took him four attempts, and finally the door broke. This appears to be you know, the Lord's room, but it stinks of death. That's the first thing we notice when we enter the room. You know, the, it's floored with the black flagstones. Their hangings all been burned and tattered. There's wreckage that's been pushed off to the sides. There's signs of occupation here. There are nine bed rolls. There's a fire pit that has cut wood next to it. Um, but the fire pit itself, well, it looks like it's been used recently, is cold. And then there's these nine bodies. Uh, as we investigate and look around, it looks like, you know, they may have been running around the room, like they're running from something. The whole room's a bloody mess. There's blood on the floor. The throats have all been cut. Um, they've been dead for at least a week. Uh, they're all emaciated. Um, Toth thinks that these have been drained like vampires or something that had gotten to them. Raymond says through his, his searching that it looks like some of them may have actually gotten out through this breach in the wall here, but then were dragged back in, just dumped. The bodies themselves are missing some obvious items. There's nothing of value left. You know, no weapons, uh, no real armor. Uh, but we also do find that each one of these guys has some kind of a symbol on them, whether it's uh, an ice-shaped patch or the tunic is embroidered with it. Um, also, one of them has uh, the holy sil symbol of Iran. He's the lawful evil god of death. Raymond cast light lore on it to find out where it was made. It was made in uh, a town called Oklo, which is on the coast east of the swamp where we are now. We search around the rest of this room, but we don't find anything. Uh, at that point, uh, one of the players had to go, and it was a nice closing spot. So as a party decide, okay, it's midday now. Uh, we'll go ahead and go down the stairs next, but we got the session at that point. All in all, a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of good rolling. Uh, my player rolled a whole lot better this session than we did last session. It was it was a lot of fun. I rolled a whole bunch of special successes on things. It was great. Um, and I got to get my rapier out and do some damage. And did not get to do my fancy uh, fencing parry stuff. But, you know, I was kind of hoping that the nine guys would still be here. You know, everybody knows Hom Hamlet is the eternal city. It's on every planet every world and every universe, right? Um, and so I was kind of hoping the bandits would still be here so I'd get a chance to fight somebody and do some, you know, parry defense, but not yet. We'll find out. Happy gaming.